the more important thing than a list of functional groups is their chemistry. So let's just spot some of the relationships I've shown you now. Carboxylic acid reacting with an alcohol forms an ester. To balance that equation, we recognize that water has been taken out in the making of an ester. If you want to go back from the esters to the carboxylic acid and the alcohol, that is cutting up that ester. Uh, that is the hydrolysis reaction. And making the ester technically is a dehydration. And when you glance at that slide, you should be able to see the same correspondence to the making of amides and their hydrolysis and the making of anhydrides and their hydrolysis. Similarly with phosphate esters, the hydrolysis of phosphate esters, the hydrolysis phosphate anhydrides, typical biological processes. They're all the same classes of structures. I flagged up to you about the oxidation states of carbon. So the carboxylic acid example is uh, through to an alcohol now. The number of carbon to oxygen bonds is changing. So the alcohol has fewer carbon oxygen bonds than a carboxylic acid. So it follows, therefore, that if you want to convert those functional groups from alcohol through to carboxylic acid, you're adding carbon-oxygen bonds. That process is an oxidation. And the reverse direction through that sequence of interconversion of functional groups, that reverse direction is a reduction process. So glancing at these structures, recognizing their names and chemical relationships, tells you how to convert them. Some of them are interconverted by acid hydrolysis or by base catalyzed hydrolysis. Some of them are converted by oxidation or reduction steps. In order to understand the types of reagents and the mechanisms that correspond to those changes, you need to have an impression what type of process you need. So this slide is all redox processes. The nitrile, triple bond to nitrogen. If you sequentially add hydrogens to that until you've used up all the double bonds, we still have the same system. An R group attached to carbon, attached to nitrogen. In the product, R group attached to carbon, attached to nitrogen. Making a primary amine from a nitrile is a reduction process. And that's quite a common way to make amines. And if we have the triple bonded carbon system and we reduce it, we're adding hydrogens. So we go from the alkyne to the alkene. That's a reduction process. It still has unsaturation, so we can reduce again we can go from the alkene to the alkane. All the double bonds have been used up, so that's now saturated. So from left to right at the bottom of this slide, we've got a reduction process, and it corresponds then that from alkane to alkene to alkyne, much harder to do chemically, but that is overall some kind of oxidation. But the chemical reduction, stopping at the alkene selectively or going right through to the saturated alkane, are classic chemical interconversions. And just to wrap up on this quick tour, a very important one in biological systems, when you met the disulfide functional group in my last lecture, I told you that it's a crucial group to hold proteins together. It contributes to the way they are retained in their three-dimensional shapes. Insulin, a very important molecule controls glucose metabolism, crucial if anybody's here got diabetes or has a parent that gets diabetes. The protein insulin is held together with disulfide bonds. It doesn't work until the disulfide bonds are there. They are cleaved chemically by reduction, and they are formed chemically by oxidation. So the enzymes that put together the tertiary structure of proteins using disulfide bridges between cysteine thiol groups, those enzymes are oxidation enzymes.